the game to burn. He's sitting at 13 life. Got some lands in play again. He's playing Esper Control. You take a look at the creature department, you're not going to find any there. A lot of spells and winning with S, or excuse me, with Elspeth, not Esper, Elspeth, Sun's champion. He's playing against Matthew Kotcher, playing Red White Burn. First time we've actually seen this deck on camera. Surprisingly <laughs> enough. And Gerard, the major thing is. He is a big fan of Ashiok. I think that he's probably the biggest proponent for Ashiok in standard, and that's been a defining characteristic of all the Esper and Grixis control decks he's been building over the last couple months. Jace is going to come in. It's going to take down. You got a Thoughtseize, a Doomblade, and a Hollowed Fountain here for Fabiano. And believe it or not, Thoughtseize is still Plenty fine against burn post board. You can easily draw too many of them, but one thought sees is uh, better than drawing zero in my mind in most games. Yeah, Shroud and I talked about this a little bit when we were in the booth during round number nine, but it's kind of a misnomer where people think you're immediately supposed to board out thought sees against them because if you thought sees a Boros Charm, you have won that battle. And information is so important too yes. for how you want to sequence your spells. Are you playing around Skullcrack this game? That's great to know. Yep. Uh, Katroop has a bunch of cards in his hand, and now here is a thought he's from Fabiano. He's at 13. He's going to go down to at least 11. Katroop may have some responses here. We'll see. Now, Gerard is going from 13 to 11, and Katroop's hand appears to be loaded. So, although he is missing white mana, critically. But as you mentioned, this might be a big deal that Gerard just says, all right, I get your skull crack, now I get to rev with impunity, and I don't have to worry about anything. Absolutely. And this looks like a Magma Jet in response. So Katroop is going to put Fabiano down to 11. Again, don't forget at home, the Thoughts use has not resolved just yet. These are responses to it, so Fabiano's life total will go down to lower once it does resolve. Ten white sources of mana in Matthew's deck, the eight red-white dual lands, and then two copies of Mana Confluence. And there's a skull crack. So Fabiano's going to go down to eight. None of this going in Jace's way because, you know, truthfully, who cares about Jace? Yeah. Now it looks like Fabiano's going to go down to six, so here's the grip. Jeez. Oof. Looks like a Warleader's Helix, I believe. A, I believe another copy of Skullcrack, I believe. Yeah, and uh, Chandra's Phoenix, yeah. it appears. Boy, what do you take here? I mean, you might have to hope your opponent doesn't draw a white land. Yeah, I think that you had to take, you most likely had to take Skullcrack and just hope. Because if Matthew doesn't draw a land next turn, the, the Chandra's Phoenix doesn't add any appreciable amount of damage because he has to cast that in lieu of attacking with Mutavault. Interesting. He's yeah. going to go with the Phoenix. Got it. Oh, no, oh, sorry, was, with the crack, with the crack, yeah. sorry. I think that's correct. So Phoenix and Warlords, he looks at the cards that are the grip, and the top card is a shock. Shock is an excellent draw here for Matthew. There's the Phoenix. We're going to take down Jace now. How do you feel about that? I think that's fine. You, you, giving Gerard a look at that many cards is really dangerous. Might have to main phase Rev here. Can you afford to kind of play that posturing game against these burn decks? Seems like it's tough to do. Well, main phase ref here is only a gain of three, so it's not its not even that much life, quite honestly. If Gerard has an untapped land, then I think main phase revving is really attractive. There's a Temple of Enlightenment, so he does not have a main phase rev. Still maybe worth doing, but this turn, if he has Detention Sphere and a removal spell, he may be better served saying, Detention Sphere, your Chandra's Phoenix, I have a removal spell for your Mutavault, and then have a much bigger revelation the following turn. Okay. Fabiano's going to move around those lands now. Rep for three is not bad here, but it's not a lot, and if Gerard manages his resources correctly, it may be for much more than that. Well, there's a D-Sphere. Now, we know if Kotroop draws a white source, he can just fire off and try to kill Fabiano. And the question now is, is he going to fire off the shock now, or is he going to wait? I am not shocking the... I'm not shocking the Phoenix, as that's what we're asking. No, no, shock, shocking oh. on the end step to go upstairs, because he can just wait, and if he draws a white source, he can go shock Warlier to you on the same turn. Not sure what Kotroop drew this turn. Again, we know about Warlier to you've seen the Mute Vault in the row, but he doesn't have his white mana. So here comes the Muta Vault. Fabiano has a removal spell, and that's certainly important. Doomblade going to take care of that. And Gerard cannot afford to take another hit here. And now he's set up a revelation that can really drag him back into this game. Verdict the draw, verdict not too important. But the rev is, I believe this is a situation where you rev on your opponent's upkeep. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So he revs on the upkeep, 
because he knows there's no combination of cards that he can dive to right now. Correct. Now, Skullcrack is a disaster, but Skullcrack's a disaster always. And at least you're making Matthew use the mana on his own turn uh -huh. rather than on your turn when it's free for him. Yep. So Fabiano is up to eight. And again, what makes this matchup interesting is because you see the records here, both these players seven and two. Fabiano's in 12th place coming this round. There's a realistic chance there, as there's Eidolon the Great Revel, that he can win this match, and if things break his way, he top eights. Absolutely. Temple of Deceit. Fabiano gonna keep his top card on top. And he's just gonna pass the turn back and rev again. And the door is closing for Matthew now. Yeah, <laughs> putting it very nicely. Fabiano actually drawing some interesting cards here during all this revelating. As you see the Eidolon's gonna come across here. It's gonna put Fabiano down to 11. You saw him pick up a copy of Night Veil Spectre. You also saw him pick up a copy of Sin Collector. So he looks like he's got some cards to interact. Supreme Verdict's gonna clean these Eidolons up. Gonna follow up with Archangel of Thune. The door might be officially now, closed. Now it's closed. Gerard has a surprising amount of creature removal in his deck post-board, given mm -hmm. that this deck has, you know, eight to 10 creatures maximum yeah. and a couple of vaults. He's showing a lot of removal. Now the way this game is playing out, it's been great for Gerard. He just got to sweep up two copies of Eidolon. He had an answer for a Phoenix and a Doomblade. But if Matthew's draw in the last game is a little bit more burn-oriented, Gerard might be in some trouble. Yeah, you see the spheres, you also see, um, uh, Supreme Verdict still being in his deck. There's yeah. a Sin Collector, because I want that War Leader to list. Ugh. Yeah, now Gerard gets to kind of show off all of these awesome three mana spells that he has in his deck. There's a Hero's Downfall. Get that out of the way. Fire at my Mutavolt. Vault. Maybe play another spell. Yeah, there's a Night Veil Spectre. Yep, do this. This is the do Harlem that. Gold Treader spinning the basketball on his <laughs> finger against the Washington General type of turn here. Gain some life, put a bunch of creatures. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Put a bunch of counters on all my guys. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Take a draw. Fire it, my beautiful. Let's get this one over boo, boo, with. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Let's move to game three. Do, do. In just a moment, of course, yeah. we're going to do some math. How much am I taking? The answer is a lot. It's, it's too much. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hundred, thousand. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think Otru may have a removal spell or something like that. We're going through formalities at this no, point. We're playing, we're playing a third game. He, he drew Boros Charm. Great. That card's really powerful in most, in most situations. Nightfall Spectre going to take Sacred Foundry. The full, the full rub in, the yeah. white source of mana. Yeah, Gerard's going to gain some life. You see the players kind of going back and forth yeah. here. What's actually more important is Fabiano's actually going to win this game in just a moment here. You see Gotrup's going to concede. Uh, you'll take a look at the middle there. We're under 15 minutes. A draw is obviously not good for anybody here, so hopefully it doesn't come to that for either player, but well, game two is over. It's tough just because, of course, it's very easy for Matthew to win in 15 minutes. Of course. Much harder for Gerard. Of course. Sideboard time. Um, well, you're the burn guy, so I'll let you do what you do. Three copies of Seder Fire Dancer, two Chain of the Rocks, two Peak Eruption, two Toil Trouble, two Wear Tear, two Spark Trooper, two copies of Deicide. Matthew drew a Wear Tear that game, although I don't think that card's very good because the only enchantments in Gerard's list, if I'm understanding things correctly, are Detention Spheres, which don't really have a lot of targets against Matthew's list. So I think that I'd probably just bring in the two copies of Toil Trouble and maybe the Spark Troopers and call it a day. Other side of things, you've got three Sin Collectors, a Doom Blade, a Deicide, a Glare of Heresy, a Dark Betrayal, two copies of Archangel of Thune, three Night Veil Specters, a Life, uh, excuse me, two copies of Life Fiend Zombie, and an Obsidian Ghost Council. Well, Gerard has a lot of really good options here for available sure. to him. Sin Collector is obvious. That card's fantastic in this matchup. Doom Blade also quite good. Takes care of Eidolon, takes care of Mutavolt, which we saw. Also takes care of Chandra's Phoenix, which is probably the most important of the bunch. DSI takes care of Eidolon if you want to. Can also take care of Chain of the Rocks, but I don't think that would be in Kotroop's deck after sideboard. Night Veil Spectre is really troublesome for Burn List, too. Don't, don't discount the significance of that card. And it's obvious how good Archangel of Thune is. It's yeah. a little bit slow, but once you get that ball rolling, it's almost impossible to lose. And uh, heck, you could even say the Obzidat's pretty good, just because gaining two, even though it's for five mana, can mess up what Burn's trying to do. It is dangerous to tap out for that card, although Gerard's really not flush with counter spells in his list. Mm -hmm. So cards like Obsidian get a lot better in that world when it's not competing for your mana with dissolves and syncopates and so forth. I feel like he's more of a tap out Esper deck. Yeah. Kind of like Esper mid range. He's not really controlled. Yeah, he has Revelation and some other things, but this is much more of a I'm going to use my mana on my turn. I don't have, you know, dissolve or syncopate and stuff like that like Jim Davis has in his blue eye control deck. And I'm just going to try to overpower you. Yeah. So. To the point about Night Veil Spectre, I mentioned that's very good against burn decks. Basically, burn's really good at dealing two damage to creatures. And so high impact, cheap, 
three toughness or greater creatures are pretty effective against burn. The fact that Night Veil Spectre blocks everything effectively, and once Night Veil Spectre gets rolling, the cards you're finding are really significant in damage races or as removal spells as well. Mm -hmm. It's not a card you would look at and say, this is for the burn matchup, but it is an important part of Gerard's overall game plan for the matchup. Well, it is time to begin game number three. We'll see what, exactly what happens here. Fabiano's on the draw. Kotrup is on the play. He's going to keep. <laughs> Gerard just can't believe his opponent doesn't have to mulligan. <laughs> as boisterous as ever. Does he like this hand? Looks like he does. We're underway. Interesting start here for Kotrup. And the reason I say that is because if you're Fabiano, the card you're probably most scared of on the opening turns of the game is Eidolon. Yeah, although... Matthew having a uh, Mutavault in his opening hand is also something that Gerard's not thrilled about. Yeah. Mutavault's a troublesome card. There's a Sacred Foundry. Our troop's going to go down to 18. Let's see if he's going to fire up here, and he will. Fabiano's going to go down to 18 as well. Although playing a Sacred Foundry untapped probably signifies that he has a very land light hand. That's what I was going to say. There's Nylon. Take a draw, we'll go troop. Looks like another copy of Mutavault. Now, don't get me wrong, Mutavol's fantastic in this matchup. Here we go. Azorius Charm, anything like that here for Fabiano? Last breath? No, just down to 16, he goes. Nothing. Sometimes Gerard does the pause and then take the damage. The pause is him thinking in his head, I can't believe this guy has the nerve to attack me right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I have Last Breath or Azorius Charm, it's so bad for him. That's what that pause was all about. Well, you've known Gerard for some time, <laughs> oh, so yeah. I'll take your word for it. This guy's got <laughs> some nerve attacking me this turn. Fabiano's third leg going to come into play tapped here, so it looks like his interaction isn't going to begin until turn four. And you can see why Gerard paused about keeping this hand. He had nothing to do on the first two turns of the game, and now only now has found black mana. And the thing is, is if he was able to find a land on time, you see he's got a sync collector in his hand. It would have been great. Here's a shock. We're going upstairs now. Fabiano down to 14. Go Troop's going to untap. He's going to take a draw. Mutavolts have been doing a nice job thus far. We'll see if he finds another red source. And again, I don't think he has another second red source. I don't think he has a second red source of mana because he's got Eidolon in his hand. And it looks like, yeah, he's firing with Mutavolt again. Probably it's going to go down to 12. It is the, probably the toughest card in standard on Esper. Uh, is there it is. There is the second red source of red mana. It's a Temple of Triumph. It looks like that card might be going to the bottom. No, it's going to stay on top. Fabiano going to take a draw here. And Zorius Charm. A little late to the party. Sync Collector is not a bad play here. Depending on the quality of, of Matthew's hand, this could be a really good point for Gerard to start catching up in the game. What do we see? Wear Tear, Lightning Strike, Eidolon, Boros Charm, War Leader's Helix. Hmm. So the Sync Collector does a lot of really good work. I mean, there's a lot of creatures for it to block and play. There is no copy of Searing Blood in Matthew's hand, which is really the only card that punishes him for having a Sync Collector here. But Matthew with a lot of range in his hand. It feels like Boros Charm, maybe? You see Fabiano's going to go with Lightning Strike. How do you feel about that decision? I know you don't, you don't have a great look in his hand. but I, I'm fine with it because Lightning Strike allows Matthew to go just kill your Sync Collector, attack you for two with the Muta Vault. This means that it, it's either his entire turn to... It's either his entire turn to War Leader's Helix, the Sync Collector, or Gerard gets to trade a Sync Collector with a Muta Vault. I can see Kotrup's turn and just being play Eidolon Pass. Uh, I mean, now, if Gerard starts drawing lands, you know, you have to be worried if you're in Matthew's seat. Do, am I going to lose an opportunity to resolve spells for the rest of the game very soon? Sure. The, uh, the window on Eidolon might, be, might have closed. If Gerard draws a land next turn, there just might be nothing left. He's, he drew Lightning Strike. Very good for Matthew. Puts him down to 10. Clears the path. Fabiano takes a draw. It's a Temple of Enlightenment, so he's found a land. That's going to come into play. It's time for Gerard to scry. He's going to leave that card on top pretty quickly. And will he play a Nightfell Spectre here? Based on the information he knows, I mean, try trading a Nightfell Spectre with a War Leader's Helix and... Matthew's entire turn is not bad. Yeah, but to me, it seems like that War Leader's Helix is primed to go upstairs now. 
I don't think he cares about that Nightmill Spectre anymore. Dude, that, this, what this means to me is that those Muta Vaults are off, and now it's all right, let's finish him off. Let's start going upstairs. Yeah. This is still not a bad turn for Gerard, given the circumstances. Looks like a mountain was the draw here for Petru. He's going to put that into play. And if you're going to cast anything, I guess there's an argument. No, he can't play Eidolon and Boros, and Boros Charm in the same turn. He's nope. only got three red mana. So I think I would just cast Warleader's Helix at Gerard right now. And even though Gerard's list is very low on counter match, you just don't want to worry about that. Yeah, and you've also seen, you know, it, you just don't know what can happen. If you want to cast it, it cast it now when the shields are down. Uh -huh. All the competitors, it is not the round. I agree with you. Turn, we'll see you know, exactly what Coach Troop would like to do on this turn. Also, it just behooves Matthew to cast the most expensive stuff first so we can get in a position where he can chain together multiple cheap stuff in the same turn. He just wants to be as mana efficient as possible. Yeah. Well, he's going to reach in. Here's four mana. Yep, and that's the decision. It looks like he's come to. Put you down to six, bring myself up to 22. I know if you're Matthew, you don't feel 100% comfortable about this play. You have a lot of different options, and all of them come with some risks, but I like starting here. Get the expensive card out of your hand while Gerard Shields are down. Beautiful to draw for Fabiano. That one's pretty important, I think. It's another piece of the puzzle. He needs blockers and then the ability to advance his board. But can he win the game quickly enough or gain life such that he can win before Matthew finishes him off with whatever comes off the top of his deck? And we might see something like a Zorius Charm giving a lifelink to that Night Veil vale Spectre, which, I mean, seems kind of yucky, but might have to do it. It seems that seems just too low impact right now to gain two. Maybe next turn with a Mutavolt, that play starts becoming realistic, but right now I just don't think that's enough. Uh, again, he does have the Mutavolt's actually a big draw because the land that comes into play untapped. And so we could see a revelation for two. Yeah. Which isn't so bad. It's not the best thing I've ever seen, but you know, there are there are worse things to do. If Gerard can leave this Night Veil back on defense and do something productive on Matthew's turn, whether that's counter something, rev for two, whatever, that's the start. He starts getting somewhere. If he needs to hit with this Night Veil Spectre out of desperation, then it's really unlikely he can beat Boros Charm in the two Muta Vaults. Fabiano going to start with the Muta Vault. And now he's going to play the rev for two in the main phase. Doesn't want to worry about Skull Crack. Yeah. So hit one, Hero's Downfall. Hit two, Godless Shrine. He's already played his land for the turn, however. I think the Spectre just stayed home, so. For sure. Like I mentioned before, the burn deck is all two twos. So Night Veil Spectre is a pretty good blocker. If you're Fabiano, you might just be hoping that he just draws a couple lands. He's got the wear and tear in his hand, but that one's, that's basically dead. Yeah. That one's not going to do very much in this game. We know about the Boros Charm, so Fabiano's at the virtual four life right now, and then the Eidolon, which in theory puts Fabiano to a virtual two. There's no guarantee of that, but it feels that way. Yeah. Mana going to be tapped to This looks like three mana. I wonder what we have here. There's a Phoenix. It, it, man, if I'm Gerard, I feel great about that. Yeah, you dodged another bullet there. Yeah. That's like taking a turn off. Take a draw for Fabiano. It's a Temple of Enlightenment. And Gerard knows about the wear tear from the same uh -huh. collector, so he's not just going to go Detention Sphere, Chandra's Phoenix, attack you, die on the way back. Yeah, no, he's not, he's not in much of a rush at all. You can sort of feel Gerard, you know, He's got a lot of draws that he needs to dodge here, but he is climbing back. He's working his way back into it, but he doesn't have the ability to take a lot of time with these decisions. Yes. You know, we're about to be under three minutes left on the clock. And, you know, there's no guarantee if Gerard wins this match that he's going to top eight. You know, it depends how tiebreakers fall and all that good stuff. But what we do know is if he draws, he is not making top eight. For sure. That's a positive in this situation. So he might have to take some more aggressive lines to just be able to try to get the game over with because you know, a loss or a draw, you're done. Correct. And his goal is certainly the top eight here. He's the one person who can maybe catch Van Meter in the race here in season two on the Open Series. Just maybe another Phoenix. All right. This feels like having the opponent take a turn off again. Yeah, and 
Matthew, of course, doesn't really care very much about the tendon sphere hitting these Phoenixes because A, they don't do very much, and B, he still has the wear tear left over. Yeah. But he's just trying to build up a board. Next turn, if Gerard does nothing again, maybe he alpha strikes. I think Fabiano's considering cycling his Azorius charm right now. I think that's what we see here. Maybe ultimate price on a Phoenix to get these out of the way. Yeah, okay, that's reasonable. He can only let the board build up so much. Yeah. He's at risk of getting hit with an Alpha Strike next turn. So, and Gerard can cannot really allow any creature to connect. Yeah, what's really interesting is he has Zorius Charm in his hand, because again, it's not going to do a ton. You know, he could make an attack with Mutavolt and Nightfell Spectre to gain four life, but I think it's better yet to just maybe cycle that and get rid of it and work your way towards some velocity. So that's what he does. He cycles that away. He wants to get deeper into his deck. Takes a draw now. We know he's got a Godless Shrine. Picked up another copy of his Zorius Charm, too. But Gerard's setting up a pretty good defense here. He is well protected, and, and Matthew's creatures are just not going to be productive draws for the rest of the game. Eidolon probably has some, some amount of utility, but otherwise, his creatures are pretty close to worthless draws. Temple of Silence here for Fabiano. That's his, uh, that's his second source of black mana. Leaves that card on top. Looking at Supreme Verdict Knight, I can't imagine he has any interest in casting that. No, the Night Veil Spectre is better than every creature that in Matthew's deck, yeah. so he's not making that trade. Fabiano just passed the turn back over to Coach Troop. Coach Troop will take a draw. For Coach Troop's side of things, again, we know he has Nylon, we know about the Wear Tear and the Boros Charm. Now he's, he quickly draws and just passes the turn back. That's, I think, the tally play, because now for Fabiano, you go, okay, well, some stuff's going to start coming upstairs. Yep. Fabiano may cycle Azorius Charm again. It looks like the answer is no, so he's just going to draw a card. You see the D sphere in his hand. Picked up a copy of Sphinx's Revelation. That's pretty important. There's a Goblet Shrine tapped. Another piece, the turn. Another piece of the puzzle. Yeah. See what this is going to be. Here's a Magma Jet. I think Fabiano says, you know, I don't have counter magic. That's fine. So Fabiano's going to go down to six, I believe. Phoenix is going to come back here for Katroop. It's going to be time to scry with that jet here. Um. See Fabiano point that out for Katroop. Looks like he almost forgot. So now here's a Boros charm. This is where you make your move with the Rev when the Red's down. Yeah. Gerard wanted to wait until after Matthew scried to then Rev because maybe he would scry differently if he knew that there was a Rev in Gerard's hand. Yep. Let's see if Fabiano wants to do here. Now the shields are down. Boros Charm puts him at two. I think if you're Gerard, you got to want a Rev at this point. Well, the Rev only brings Gerard up to six, though. Yeah, I mean, the rest not gonna, you're not getting any better. Also, you can't pass. And, I don't think you can pass and just hope to, like, pick your spot correctly with the rev. Yeah, you know, that's I, true. I think that now that the shields are down, you can't get skull cracked. You just take your four life and you undo the Boros Charm. You get four more cards. Maybe you chain yourself into another rev. Who knows? But I don't think you can afford to just say, that's fine, you can untap. And then, you know, then you have to bob and weave around maybe, like, you know, shock, shock. Something yeah. like that. Or even just one shock kills Gerard from here, I think, if he taps out. Yeah. And I, yeah, this is a little bit surprising. Because right now he's at two. Yeah. He might just be trying to bait Matthew into making an alpha strike before doing anything else, where Jorah then just gets to use two removal spells on the two mutavolts, block something else, and then rev the next turn for more. Mm -hmm. And the problem here for Fabiano is he's sitting at two life. Is I, I don't think the world. I don't think there's a world that exists that he can win this game now. No, I, I, that's the bigger problem. Can't win in time. He may be able to cobble together a draw. There's a ref on the upkeep. Surprising to me.
I guess he he may know all the cards in Coach Roop's hand. Yeah, I think that's the from thing. the Sin Collector, so that makes some sense to me. Yeah. And I guess the thought process here is I don't have any interest in discarding. Here's some mana. There's a Phoenix. Looks like Coach Roop's draw for the turn was a skull crack. Phoenixes are gun to attack. Block. Fabiano goes down to four. And Coach. Matthew suspiciously leaves up two when he could have sent in a muta ball to yeah. that attack. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Turn two here, it turns. Fabiano with the sin collector. That'll give him some info. Really what that do really what that will do is get him skull cracked, I think. For sure. So here is that. And now here is this. There's a skull crack. That's going upstairs. Again, Fabiano, so light on the counter magic. He's more of a tap out style of deck. It's got to punish this bird matchup. There's yeah. no two ways about it. Yeah. Now I'll show you an Eidolon. I'll show you a Wear Tear. Wear Tear is going to bite the dust. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. What he did forget is to get the Phoenix back. I mean, Gerard's got flyers locked down. Hey, he's got thing. one he's got, flyer. Well, he's got a ton of removal spells. Sure. And those removal spells aren't doing anything else. Yeah, so. sure. Uh, of course, he'd rather get the Phoenix back, but I would be surprised if this game comes down to a Chandra's Phoenix. But you never know. It's true. You do never know. Fabiano with six mana left on the turn. I think even with just a couple of spells in Gerard's sideboard, his matchup here would be really solid. Just needs more interaction. He didn't start doing anything until turn four. Yeah. And his plan for this turn may have been to just go attack you with maybe Night Veil, maybe not Immutable, and Azorius Charm, but now he can't do that because of the Skull Crack. Looks like Fabiano wants to consider an Ashiok here. As you mentioned, one of his favorite cards. Really, 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 really impressive card at Pro Tour Journey in the Knicks. Yeah. Really, really good in those bug decks that people played. Well, the format had so many, the format was so slow and ponderous with so many good three and four mana creatures that if that's not a good metagame for Ashiok, I don't know what is. Yeah, the other thing too, I think the, the neat interaction is that you can play Ashiok and you can take it up to five and then you get a prognostic sphinx, like the way that it works. Yeah. It, it actually just works out perfect. Take it up and then, and then take it away and get your sphinx and you can protect it the rest of the game. Gerard really contemplating what card to play. It looks like he's just going to discard a hero's downfall past the turn back. So turn three will go to go troop. Ladies and gentlemen, if you there's a mountain. That's an idle on. This will force Fabiano's hand to respond. Yeah. And he spells he has. He's got to. He's got to actually play now. And this is significant because it cuts off the Azorius Charm to gain a bunch of life mm -hmm. line. Which is what it felt like Gerard was setting up. He's trying to get there. Yeah, get a couple of dorks in play, attack with them, gain six. Yeah. You know, that, that might be good enough to get him out of this situation. But that window might be closed now, too, because of this Eidolon. Yeah. And Gerard just trying to make sure here if there's... He really wants to clutch onto the Azorius Charm if he possibly can because the lifelink mode gives him uh, a different angle of attack, but there's just nothing to be done with it at this point other than cycle. He's just going to cycle away, probably use the Doom Blade on the Chandra's Phoenix, and then just let the, let the Eidolon into play. And be kind of locked in the ability to play spells. I guess he does have a Verdict there, but... Well, he can't vert away his two creatures in the face of, of two Matthew's two Muta Vaults, yeah. so. Now, here's Doomblade on the Phoenix. So, not Eilon will resolve. Matthew just says, yeah, it's your turn. So, Gerard goes to turn four. If he finds a Rev here, he's safe. Yeah, just from losing, he's safe, yeah. yeah. Take a draw. Attention sphere. No text there. Yep. I don't think anything is castable in Gerard's hand besides Supreme Verdict. If he casts Verdict, you see he's moving over Mutavolt as a blocker. 
So if, he's, if, he casts, if he casts Verdict, I believe what he can do is cast Verdict, have Muta Ball as a blocker for one, have a removal spell as a, quote, blocker, unquote, for two, mm -hmm. and still live. But, you know, if Matthew draws a burn spell, <laughs> that does it. And interestingly enough, if Matthew... If, if Gerard can only have what he's on the what he has on the board right now and not cast a Supreme Verdict, then the fact that the Chandra's Phoenix is not in Matthew's hand is significant uh -huh. again. Jeez. Okay. That won't trigger the idol on. And yeah. the plus power on Chase doesn't get him anywhere. No. He's at, he's at one. So I imagine he's going to go looking for something. You see Mutavolt there being slidden up with the creatures. This will be blocking duty. Looks like we're going to probably take down. I don't think taking up, as you mentioned, taking up doesn't do anything. So taking down is probably for the best. Yeah, taking down allows him to find Revelation, which has more utility than any of the other cards in his hand. Yeah. So. so here come cards. Number one, Archangel of Thune. Number two, Revelation. Number three is Goblet Shrine. Pretty easy split, if you ask me. Yep. I mean, Revelation is significant in that Shock is no longer an out. Yep, that's true, because he can, I mean, he can rev for two, go put yep. himself up to three and doesn't take damage from the Eidolon. Right. Converted mana cost is above three mana at that point. But the Archangel, again, we're in turn four. I don't know what it really does here. Looks like Gerard's taking it, though. A little surprised. This is this is curious. Yeah, I agree with you. This is a little bit a uh, little bit curious. I'm a little surprised to see him take that and put the rev to the bottom. Again, the rev's only the only card that can keep him alive. Okay, so there's an archangel. Okay. So turn five. I mean, burn right. spell, burn spell or not, pretty much. Well, now shot kills Gerard. Yeah. So take a draw. What was that? Was that Chandra? Was that Chandra? Chandra does one to a player. Real? Oh my goodness! Yep. That is it. So that was another. <laughs> that was another card that gets cut off if Gerard takes the revelation. Unbelievable! Matthew Kutrip, you see a deep sigh of relief wins this match with Gerard Fabiano. Wow. Two games to one on a turn five Chandra Pyromaster, and I believe Fabiano's friends are pointing out exactly what he could have done. Wow. Yeah, I'm curious. So I, I'm curious what Gerard's. I'm just curious what Gerard's logic there is on not taking the, the Revelation. Yeah, I believe that Rev was the best card to take there. I mean, that's that, what it looks like either a, way. We're in turn four of extra turns. There's nothing else, no, nothing else in his hand provides any utility. 